Right, um, today's little vlog, whatever you want to call it, um, we're going to fit some of this Hardy. It's the VL range. Um, now, it's a cement fibre board, um, and they don't want you to be breathing in the dust because apparently it's not very good for you. So, we found the best way to cut it. You can get um, a four toothed blade, I'll show you that in a little bit. We've got that on the circular saw, but the best way with that, a shadow of a doubt, to cut it is with a stone blade and an angle grinder. Um, it's messy. Um, there's no means of catching the dust so what we found is the best option is to use the blower and as I'm cutting it Davey will blow it and he'll blow the dust away from both of us and we find that the best way of, of cutting this board like I said um, you can get a guillotine but the guillotine is no good for this board um, the other hardy board the overlap you can use it on that but you can't use it on this one because it crushes the um, the little tongue and stuff on there that, that slots in but I'll show you how it all works um shortly so what we're gonna do i've already marked up these boards um that one's damaged but that's my length of my board you don't ever see that anyway so the other board will butt up to that so that's that's fine we can use that we've got this particular one it's called sail cloth um we get from brick services in newcastle and the guys up there are absolutely awesome they'll do literally you know they bend over backwards to help you out so what they do they send it down on the truck uh, pallet, um, it's on a massive pallet, but you've got to have two or three people there to handball it off because um, it can't be forked off. So that's it, Brick Service in Newcastle, absolutely fantastic team of lads up there as well. Um, like I say, this colour is sail cloth, it's the first time we've used sail cloth. Um, you can see it here, I wasn't, when, when I seen the colour before I fit it, I thought, phew, this thing is going to stand out too much, but it's actually really nice. Um, it's sort of like a beige colour, isn't it? So you can see the boards there. Um, they recommend, uh, they, they recommend, they say that it's good for colour for 15 years, that's reckoned. So that's, this building will stay like this, exactly the way we leave it today. Um, there's a clip on corner goes on there. We'll have to paint up them ends because once you cut the end, you've got to paint it then to seal it. Um, and there's a clip on corner goes on there. We've got a little bit of work to do. That top's got to come back off up there. We've got a little bit of work to do around there. Um, and you can see these door reveal trims. Probably this one's easiest to show you on. Well, I'm going to show you how we fit these as well because this, this stuff originally was designed, I guess, for houses and stuff like that. But obviously the thickness of these garden roll, room walls doesn't give you a lot of um, reveal there. So what we've done, we slide the trim next to the door and it provides a lovely little finish the only thing that you can't do is the top because it's not the same trim obviously there's a drip hole in there if any water gets in there which it's not in this circumstance because you've got the roof overhang but that's a different type so you've got the door reveals and then you've got the header um and you can see the slate button just up there can't you david yeah um so we're gonna we're gonna trim that with something but i'll show you that later as well so what we're going to be doing is we're going to finish this wall here um we put a couple of boards on yesterday that's that's the um the, the door the door reveal trim so if you can just see there david look what i'm gonna do i'm gonna slot it in there like that can you see that yeah yeah so that's got a coat of plastic on that um let me take off and see what a neater finish it is then it comes plastic coated obviously to protect it um there you go right get that off there so what happens there that's going to slide in next to the window there like that and it provides a nice little finish and you don't have to put any board on there you can if you want but you don't because that's a nice little reveal that will sit down onto that sill there like such um and then this this part here is is the header part so what will happen there that will sit on there like that and get pinned to there and you can see there i've got now left with this slate like which we're going to have to infill with something so you can see what i've done there i will show you when they're going on that will go like that that will go like that and they'll both sit like that um and then we'll be able to to finish it nice um but like i said i'll show you that as we're doing it um there's a cable there as well so we've got an outside socket on this now it's not structural isn't this board so what they recommend then is that you put something behind it to carry whatever you're going to fix to it so we'll have an outside socket there i've literally got some off cuts of slate button nailed them to the wall so when the outside socket goes on there there'll be two fixings there and two fixings there and i know i've got a good fixing in that wall there um you can see the air vent up at the top there um so that, there's an air vent at the top and air vent at the bottom they recommend a 10 mil gap at the top um there so you've got some airflow that goes up and it stops any insects coming in i guess as well that's the that's the plan behind that the bottom um if i've got any yeah we have yeah so you get a thing called a starter profile um there's a bit around there at the divvy right so you've got a thing called a starter profile 
your, your air vent goes on the bottom that's your starter profile your starter profile then goes on as well so that's on the bottom and then what happens then let me clear that crap out there look can you see that groove in there look yeah so what will happen then is that will sit on there like that into there yeah and then that's your bottom board it's sat on there you've obviously put that on dead level and then you fix there and off you go so it's pretty straightforward and to be honest with you this is how many have we done now david there might be about six or seven in this range isn't it hardy vl um didn't like it at all when i first started you know it's not wood you can't work with it as easy as wood but um we kind of grasped well the technique that we're going to use what we were doing before we were putting the slate buttons on waiting for the cladding to come and then working around it but what we decided was a better way now was to use these little buttons there get the um get the air vent on same on the bottom little buttons holding the air vent on then we get the start profile and then what we've got is just gone round and cut a load of slate buttons to the right height and then just drop them in which is a lot faster routine now we've found so without further ado we will get back around here um, we're going to cut these boards and I'll show you how they're getting fixed on and what they're also going to get fixed on with. Right, so as, as I said before, you've got your starter profile that goes on the bottom. That's your first one. That's your next one. And it covers your nail because your nail goes there and it covers that. I'll show you the nail and the nail gun in a minute as well. Right, what happens sometimes is, let's say you've got a couple of little odulations in your slate buttons and stuff like that. And it's not, and it, sometimes it's just a little bit, little bit of a gap like that and it just won't go down. So what we found the best way of doing with that is... I have a pencil. Okay, so what I'll, what I'll do, I'll cut this board like that, get rid of that bit there, and then I'm going to use that as a tapping block to tap my next one down, but if I don't cut that lip off there, what I'll have to do is cut that much off there, because what happens is, so let's say let's, uh, I've cut that much off there, so what will happen, when I'm tapping that down, that edge is meeting that edge and it chips it, so if I cut that little bit off there, I still go in the slot, but my front edge won't meet that edge and it won't chip it. So that'll be a little tapping block. Sometimes they go down, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you give them a pull and other times just a little tap with an hammer. So I'll trim that down and we'll use that. Right, so there's my little tapping block. Um, so we're using a coil nailer. It's got stainless steel nails in it. Um, let's have a look. Let's see there. You can see them there. I think the 35 mil out there. Um, it's perfect for this job. Right, Brandon. So what we'll do brandon will get it somewhere right it's, it's a little harder to maneuver it once it's um when it when it's in are you right length brandon yeah, yeah. yeah right so let's see if you can see now yeah, that one's gone down pretty well on it yeah. yeah but another time what i might have to do is give that a little tap and like you say there you say, I've, I've cut that off there so it's not going to damage that top board but that one's gone down all right are you in right position yeah david you want to jump around here so coil nailer there um don't want to nail it at the top because if you nail it at the top there you see that gap there yeah. you'll compress that gap but the little rubber stopper on the coil nail if you just pop it and sit it on there and then it fires it in the perfect position right brandon can we have another one just pop another one in there just skipped off a bit on that and the thing with these though because stainless steel they are quite soft so if for whatever reason if your nail doesn't go in you tend to got to grind it off because sometimes it just won't won't punch in at all are you, are you good length yeah are you good length Brandon yeah yeah, yeah. right has that one gone down it hasn't it yeah, um, like I say, we'll just push it down a little bit there. Brandon, bring us an off cut and not full length. Right, so we've got the bottom of the window to get round now. Um, we're just, just going to bring me an off cut and I'll just see where it finishes. Right, so that piece is going to go on there like that. And see how that's finished there now like that um it's not actually ideal to be honest with you so what we're looking at there is taking the top of that off so what we might actually do is put a bit of j trim on top of that just to tidy it up because i can't put it in that tight which would be you know an ideal situation because i've got a it's got to lift up let me see it's got to lift up that much there 
to actually go on there. Can you see that, yeah? So what we're looking at is that much, which will then leave me like a 10 mil gap there. Um, let me see if I can get some J trim. So they do this J trim. I don't think it's actually used for what we're going to use it for. But what we're going to do is put cut a little piece when I cut this. And what we'll do, we'll lift it up there like that. And we'll push it tight to the bottom of the window and it will conceal the gap. And then we'll just put a fix in there and a fix in there. And it'll stop it from falling back down. But I'll show that going on as well. Um, what I'm going to do now, I've just found some off cuts of them. So, Brandon! Both, both of them will do it. Right, so I'm going to put the trims on first. Now, the best way to measure these is I've got, I've got a little off cut like that, yeah? And then a little off cut there like that. So I know that that is going to sit like that. So that length there to there where that will sit on that plastic trim there is the actual length of, of my upstand. And because the, the window's put in with a laser, um, let me see if I can just hold that on there. Because the window's put in with a laser, both legs are exactly the same length. Um, even if you didn't put in with a laser, it's not the end of the world. Right, so I'm going to make it 961 so that I've got a little bit of wiggle room on that and I can just drop that down to, to, to make it meet. So what he'll do now, he'll cut both of them, both of that trim there, the window reveal trim at the same length, and then I'll slide it in once I've took the plastic off. Just behind, let me put that side there, you see it better. And it, and it provides a nice little finish, does that? So. That's what we're going to go with. Again, we're going to f fasten these trims on with the, um, with the, with the what's it called, David? Coil nailer. Yeah, we're going to fasten that on with coil nailer. Right, he's cut these trims, he's cut them exactly the same height. Now, there's two ways around. You've got a little reveal, there, a little sort of trim there, or you can have it like that one there, where you've got a much deeper one, but... It, what, what if you put it like that when that sits like that, you've got a little step there can you see that david yeah. yeah so what we're going to do we're going to put it get my head around that there we go we're going to put it the little side yeah and that means that it, it won't actually sit past that little thing um past the end cap really i can't get my words out today right so what what did i just say we want little side facing us then don't we that's right isn't it yeah so like i said it comes with a a plastic coating on it so hope it getting scratched right what i'm trying to do now is get this in here so there's no foam showing there right so i'm sat on my slate button there i know i'm i know i'm plumb rather because my window's in plumb and even if i want if i hadn't put my window in plumb when that's in there and that gap like that it still looks right so that's that's in a good position now so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to put a couple of nails in there just to hold that and that's that trim on but you can see what a nice finish that is look it looks absolutely crisp right so we'll now put on the second side as well again pull off this little plastic if you don't pull this off now then it's a nightmare to get it off after you fit stuff um so don't forget uh this is like i said it's the first color we've used on this one um in sail cloth it is we normally use anthracite or black it's what most, most people go for right what i'm thinking now is the cost of cedar is still ridiculous and i can't ever see it coming down so um as much as i wasn't over keen on fitting this now i think it'll be the way forward for a lot of people um and like i said it's gonna look like this in years to come so i'm just going to pop that in there now you just hear it compressing against the form make sure it's pushed down properly right i'm thinking just debbie just passes that head a little bit there that is the head mate yeah right it's just a little bit proud a little bit too big there what's happened there when that button's fixed look you see it david that, that yeah. nail's actually split it which has pushed the button down which is not ideal. It goes on there lovely, but it don't go on there so nice. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to pair a bit of that off with the chisel rather than cut that, because I know both of them are the same height and that's what that's what we're trying to aim for. But you can see there, nailed it too close to the end and it split the pattern. So that's my um, my two window reveals. Get the words out eventually. Two window reveals, they're good happy with them right i can now cut the bottom board so what i'm basically going to do on this bottom board is i'm going to cut a full length 
I'm going to measure, notch out from my window like that, and then I'm going to put that that um, that J trim on there. And then when we fix it, I'm going to lift the J trim up and put two colour coded screws just under the sill there, just to hold the J trim under the sill. So I've already cut a board to length, 3.4. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to measure from there. It'll give me my window. Um, put my glasses on because I can't see crap of that. Right, this measurement needs to be good now, yeah? It needs to be nice and tight. So I've got 1126. Right, so what I'll do, I'll measure that. That'll be 1126 to there. And then regardless of anything else, it needs to fit on the window. So I'm going to measure the window and I've got 1207. So that gap there is 1207 and then I need to determine this height there and like I said what for what I'm going to do I'm going to measure it to that if David can see I'm going to measure to that point there because we know it sits there which is um, 197 but I'm going to take off 10 mil so that'd be 187 So that's my board, that's what I need to cut. Um, I'll go cut that now and I'll cut a piece of that J trim as well at 12.07 and then that board should go on there nicely. Um, and what I'll do as well before I forget, I'm just going to mark the underside of that window there just so I know where them screws are going to go. Mm, what I'm thinking then, I'm just looking at that. Let's have a look, 132. Right. I want, it, I want the screws to look the same. Right, so I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fix a little bit of slate button there so that I can then screw there and there and it'll look uniform and together. Right, so you, you can see the bit there, look, and we've dropped that J trim on. What I was gonna do, I'm gonna push it up because we're, how it's fallen on that tongue there, it doesn't actually look that good pushed up. That was the plan there, to send it up like that. You've got like a little gap there so what i'm planning on doing now is just leaving it sat on there like that i'm still going to put fix in there and there but that's a nice little finish there it's got rid of the raw edge davy's already just painted it and you can see there when we put this next bit on now that'll sit nice like that a little bit of silicon maybe there a little cream silicon and then we can go up there then on that as well and you can see this side's falling exactly the same as well um a little bit of silicon in there just in there, just to tidy that up, a little bit of cream silicon. And that, that'll look mint. Right, so what we're gonna do now is cut the board. So the board's come at 3.6 long. That's your board, 3.6. It's got a machine end on both ends, which has been factory painted. So what I'm gonna do, I'll take this measurement there and I'll take that measurement and I'll cut the two boards. But what I'll do is this one here, which has got the factory on end, will go that one there. And that one there, which has got the factory end, will go on that end. So we'll get the two cuts out of the both boards. Have a nice factory end finish there. That's been factory painted. And then we'll just paint the ends there um, that, before we put the corners on so it's all sealed. So that's that's what you want to be doing, really. The end, is this an off-cut? It is there, look. See, that's, that's come from the factory and it's already been painted the same colour and it's sealed. So like I say, we'll cut a piece there, that'll drop in there and vice versa on that other side as well. Yeah. Right, so we've cut the section out of there. Davey's then painted it with, with the colour-coded paint um, and I've obviously, because we've got um, a pitched roof, I've obviously scribed it to side, to side of the roof. Go. So that now wants to come down there a little bit like that. What, what we got? What was John's trying to do now? He's just pull it down because it's just sometimes, like I said before, it just doesn't go in properly. Uh, it's down sufficiently there now, and you can see I've scribed it there. It's 10 mil there, but obviously I'm, I don't know if you can see the air vent anymore. I will fall in the air vent where I've run to nothing now. So what we're going to do? We're going to put another piece in there, but we're going to put this channel on as well. Yeah, but we're going to reverse it so the 40 mil is sticking down there because when this piece comes down there. There's like a, um, you can, because it's white, you can see the shadow. So when we reverse the P trim, uh, the J trim rather, it looks a lot better. Um, so that's that. that. That's that piece in now. I'm going to mark up where it needs fixing. Take some measurements for where my uprights are because we will be using the, I think I've got one in my pocket, yeah. They're using the colour coded screws on the top of there. If you don't want to go at the expense of the colour coded screws, is you can use the screws that you put on. Um, 
that you put the starter profile on with and just dip the end in the colour coded paint and it paints up nice so that's fine. Look close here. Yeah? Right the mics have just failed so anyway there's a two part clip on corner so we've, we've got the corner there like that. Um, again got a put plastic protection on so that's the inside bit what you do you pop that on there like that. We're going to then screw that to the hardy board with the screws that they provide well not provide you have to buy them little flattening screws so when that goes on there like that and it's fixed i'll then if david can look over the top i'll hook that corner on there like that and it'll be fixed obviously and then oh, just go like that and it'll clip on and it'll tidy that corner up there and conceal that the only issue we have sometimes with these is they don't they don't stay on so what we'll do we'll just put one screw color coded screw in the bottom there just to stop it slipping down in the future right so the the side reveals there that's a lovely finish that nice and crisp actually looks like it's actually part manufactured with the window as one now the top as i said before davy's already popped this in let me see if i can get it out slide it to the left on there we go right sorry if the sound is a bit crap right you can see the slate light on there i haven't give it enough time to think about what i can actually put on that as far as the metal trim is concerned um so that we won't have to do this but what we tend to do now rather than cutting a bit of a hardy board down which you know you're cutting little strips like i said before this hardy board was originally intended for houses and stuff like that where you had a much deeper reveal but because of the nature of this build we've got a little skinny reveal so we end up cutting little skinny bits like that now this isn't hardy board this is uh cream uh demold from um what do we get from non-building plastics yeah. yeah so that's that so what we've done we've just put that down and once that goes up in there let's see if i can get it in for you how did you get in there i slid it into the left and then pulled it back to right right, yeah. right once that goes in there like that i'm just going to double it up just because well, if we use black or, or anthracite, um, we'd use a, a nice 10 mil soffit, but this is smaller this time. I'm going to double it up. But still, it's not the end of the world. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pop that up into there like that. Pop that into there so it sits on there. And you can see now, that's provided a lovely little finish, that, because it actually, it, it's a very, very good colour match, is that. Um, and the way I'm going to fix that up now, I'm just going to open this window, and I'm just going to put... A cool corded screw dead in the center there let me see if i can get that open it window i don't want to burn it and just what i'll do now is use one of these color coded screws pop that up there let's watch that don't catch the window there we go There we go. Right, so that's that's that finish and it's crisp. It looks like it actually should be like that. Um, you can obviously, if you're using different colours, because you, you won't be able to get fascia or even demold in the same colour match as that. But we have ma managed this, so different colours, you're going to have to cut a bit of board down. Well, that's how to do your reveal there. Not actually needed any hardy board in there. It looks well crisp and nice. Um, clean that off and that's that side finish. So you can see that trim we put on the top there. We put the other side round because like I said before, when we cut this top piece to a little sliver there, it looks awful, and the 10 mil on the other side of this doesn't hold it, so we've reversed it on that. There are the click-on corners. That's the socket I was on about there. There's a screw there, screw there, screw there, screw there, and obviously I've got my slate buttons behind there, so you're not actually fixed to the board, it's fixed to the slate buttons, which is fixed to the building. We've got the corner profile on there, a little colour-coded screw there, look, yeah? Yeah. That'll, hold it, that'll stop it falling down, and if you step back now, you can see the front of the build there. Like I said, it's sail cloth, actually goes really nice. I wasn't over sure about it when I seen the colour, um, but once we started putting it on, it was really nice. Um, right, what's going to happen with this then? Um, customer's going to get some landscapers in, he's going to have a new paved area, all his paths going to re be replaced, and he'll have a new paved area which will be just lower than the building, and I guess he's going to get rid of all that there. So what we've got left to do now is get rid of our crap. Um, got some on its way, I believe. See, John's put his outside light on there as well. Or oh, Brandon has, I can't remember. Brandon, you do that, yeah? Um, he's got some soffits in the downlight. Soffits in the downlight? He's got downlighters in the soffit. And inside, well, I'll, I'll let you have a look around it when we um, when we come back because we haven't got the metal cladding for the back as of yet. Um, but you can see in there now, I'm at floor skirt. Our customers chose to paint this on themselves. 
Don't put heat on the wall. We've got a little letterbox fixed pane there. We've got us opening window around there, which you see, and we've got that massive, what size is that TV? 65, 65 inch TV. Um, you can see Christmas has got soundbar. He's got his Xbox somewhere under there, and you can see the no cables because we've got our brush plates in the wall, and the HDMI lead is running up to the back of the TV and feeding that. Um, so that's it. That's how to do your Hardy board. Um, what else have I got to say? Is that it, John? Um, Hardy BL, like a brick service in Newcastle. Absolutely great bunch of lads. They'll, they'll do anything for you up there, and they'll get it delivered to you as well. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. There should be a subscribe button somewhere down here on the corner. Um, if you click that, that'd be fantastic because we're slowly getting up to that 100,000 mark, which would be absolutely amazing. Anyway, so we're going to another one tomorrow. Um, you might have seen us put the base in. It's a garage, old garage. We stripped the garage down, brick built. We've left one of the walls up though, so that it's the, so the neighbor, customer's neighbor has a nice um, outlook on it, really what she was always used to. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow.